Justin Timberlake. I'm sexy back. The Forget Tomorrow World Tour. Live in Memphis. Justin Timberlake. FedEx Forum, Saturday, November 23rd. Get tickets now at LiveNation.com. The brand new single, Selfish, is available to stream and download now. For more, hit up JustinTimberlake.com. I wondered so much when I was watching it how much of it was to prove I am not this guy's little brother. Oh, for Powell? I still remember the song you made about Powell. That was you, right? That was your <laughs> No, no. It's yeah. deleted. It's gone yeah, forever. I, I yeah, still remember, so... Muff. Mark, I was we back all in Spain. mistakes. I was, I, was, I was about to make a couple of calls down in Fraser. I'm like, go get this, Muff. The Chris Vernon Show, presented by Caesar Sportsbook, live weekdays at noon on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Vince Williams is going to go to All-Star Weekend. Now, what a great thing for him. Kudos to, to Vince Williams Jr. You know, um, he was an injury replacement on the Panini Rising Stars. He'll get a chance to be part of the All-Star Weekend Showcase. Hey, Grizzlies fans, be sure to tune in to Grizzby, where the panel and I break down all things Grizzlies and take a look at the rest of the NBA as well. The show is live every Wednesday, 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Take your fandom to the next level with the official Grizzlies app. Go all access and behind the scenes. It's got to be heavy defense. That's where it starts for us. Personalized to where you are and who you are. Get easy access to ticketing, the game day guide, and your own app customization right at your fingertips. Upgrade your experience and download the Grizzlies app today. Ford Tough Studio and FedEx Forum. It's the Gary Parish Show, presented by Ortho South on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Now, here's your host, Gary Parish. All right. I'm here. My name is Gary Parrish. I'm speaking to you from the Built for Tough Studio FedEx Forum, downtown Memphis. Bennett Doyle's right there producing the program. Glad he's with me. Glad you're with me. Hope you're getting through the day best you can. And I hope you don't like your Western Conference playoffs with Steph Curry involved because he didn't make it. The Warriors season is over. Is the dynasty also over? We'll yes. discuss it. Bennett says yes. Bennett says yes. We'll discuss it momentarily. First, so quickly, let me set today's schedule for you. In the next segment, about 20 minutes, Mike Wallace is going to join me. He, of course, senior editor, Grind City Media. Talk to Mike about all things NBA, including LeBron James advancing to the Western Conference playoffs with a victory in New Orleans last night. Mike Wallace is going to join me in the next segment. Instead of talking to Mike, I'll take a break, come back, do five more things you need to know, at which point we'll discuss five previously undiscussed stories. Among them, Jonathan Gavoni, Jeremy Wu have updated their NBA mock draft, ESPN.com. They got the Grizzlies picking seventh because that's what the projections suggest at this moment. I'll tell you who they got them selecting. We'll do that in about 40 minutes. The ratings for the 2024 WNBA draft are in as expected. It's set records. I'll give you the numbers a little later on in the show. Already? Already? What? We have a new Dear Jane. Oh, nice. A new Jane. Jane's been busy. She's been real busy. She answered questions over the weekend. She's already answered questions again. All right. It's not as scandalous as our last Dear Jane. Oh, uh, it's not a... I don't want to oversell it. Dinner party filled with a, an affair. It's not a dinner party filled with an affair. But, but, it is a relationship issue. Okay. And it's a, you know, it's a woman wanting to know, how should I handle this situation between me and my, uh... My boyfriend, I love him dearly, but he's driving me nuts. Okay. Hey, we've all been there, haven't we? Yeah. I mean, we've all been there. I got you, babe. I got you. Answer's coming up. Answer's coming up. We'll handle this situation in the third segment. Duke lost a four-year starter to the transfer portal Transfer portal last night. Imagine, you've been starting at Duke for four years at point guard. You're projected to start at Duke for a fifth year because of the COVID year. You're 
considered the favorite to win the national championship, and you're like, yeah, I don't want this. Damn. I don't want this. Jeremy Roach said he's got to go. I'll tell you more about that situation in just a bit. And a woman who accused former Major League Baseball pitcher Trevor Bauer of sexual assault has now been indicted by a grand jury in Arizona on felony charges of fraudulent schemes and theft by extortion. Not long after this happened, Trevor Bauer discussed it on social media. Interesting situation. I'll make Bennett make some strong declarations about it. We'll do that during a segment we call Five More Things You Need to Know. Then we'll eventually do GP's carryout, and we'll call it a day. That'll be it. Okay. So that's the rundown. we got a lot to get to. But I did want to start with the NBA because uh, the first two Western Conference playing games were held last night. It's a fun doubleheader, I thought. Yep. Game one, Lakers beat the Pelicans 110-106. So LeBron and the Lakers are the seventh seed in the West. They're going to open a best-of-seven series against the Nuggets. That's going to be on Saturday in prime time on ABC. Meantime, the Pelicans... They're now set to host the Kings in a winner-go-home game on Friday night, and that's because the Kings beat the Warriors last night in our second play-in game to keep their season alive and end the Warriors' season and possibly the Warriors' dynasty. Final score last night, Kings 118, Warriors 94. So Golden State's going to miss the formal 16-team playoffs for the third time in the past five years. They finished 10th in the West this season. 46-36 record. They lose their play-in game. By 24 points. Steph Curry is 36. Still awesome, but 36 years old. Draymond Green is 34. Unreliable and with three years left on his contract. Klay Thompson, 34. He's an unrestricted free agent. And buddy, he didn't have a good one last night if that was his last one. 0 of 10 from the field. 0 of 6 from 3. Big Bet Bennett, Steph, Draymond, Clay. They have spent 12 seasons together in Golden State. They've won four championships. They've won a record 73 games back in the 2015-16 season. They've done some amazing, historically unprecedented things. But there is some thought that this really might be it. I'm asking you, have we watched Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green play together for the Warriors for the final time? I think so. Um, I, I mean, you just... You look at what they, they've got a lot of money tied up into their guys right now, and Clay's an unrestricted free agent. So, unless he's willing to come back on a small deal, I just, I don't see any way he's back with the Warriors. And he kind of, dude, you saw him walking off the court last night. I'm sure you've seen the video. Like, he, like, kind of, he stopped. He stopped for a sec. He knows. He had that moment where, like, yeah. this really might be it. You see that sometimes. Yep. Where people are walking off, whether it's a field or a court or whatever, for the final time. And they, they haven't quite said it's the final time. Like, this really might be the last time I leave this place mm -hmm. in this uniform. I hadn't said it yet, but I know this really might be it. And so you'll have that moment where you stop and you sort of, you know, you look around and you really want to, you know, take it in. I think uh, Tom Brady probably had this moment. Uh, Jason Kelsey, at the end of this past season, I think probably had that moment. Mm -hmm. And here it is, thanks to Kyra showing it to us. You're going to see Clay Thompson, like, just sort of stop and look around and just like delaying the inevitable, yeah. the inevitable being I've got to walk off this court. Even some Kings fans, prominent Kings fans there, like patting him on the back, like, hey, we hate you, but we recognize this might be a special moment in your career and by extension, life. Do you see that? I know people here don't really like the Warriors. By extension, don't really like Klay Thompson. I know he Correct. tried. I know he tried to start beef with Jaron Jackson, mm -hmm. like he's yes, like he did. Like he's like he's Rick Rick Ross, mm -hmm. you know. And I know that didn't play well here. But it, can you find it somewhere, somewhere in your heart? Like that was a as a man who might have been watching his life change forever right then. Can you find somewhere in your heart some empathy for that man? Uh no. no, um no no oh. he's uh he's he's had his time he and he's got time. a lot of great things to look back on sure so congrats yeah and uh, it's over it's over buddy sorry I do think you're right that it is over unless he is willing to take far less money than he has ever indicated he's willing to take because if you're Golden mm -hmm. State what Clay is gonna do now is put this on you. Like, I'm Clay Thompson. I'm a part of this thing. I won four championships here. My number will someday be retired. 
and you need to treat me with that level of respect in the form of a contract. Mm -hmm. He's going to put that pressure on them. You know what they should do? Is turn around and put the pressure right back on him and say, we love Clay Thompson, and we do not want him to leave. But and I think Clay would even agree with this. Put it back on him. Yep. I think Clay this would. This is even, what we got. I believe, I think even Clay would agree with this. Like we we only have a few more years left of Steph Curry operating at this level, and we need to maximize it to try to win a championship. Nobody's here trying to go to Western Conference semifinals. I think even Clay would tell you that. And we simply cannot tie up all this money in Clay Thompson and continue to have cha- realistic championship aspirations. So we want Clay. We want Clay to know we want Clay. And we hope that Clay wants to be here and that he also prioritizes winning. Because if we mesh all that stuff together, we want Clay, but we want to win. He wants to be here, but he wants to win. Well, then we got to compromise on this contract mm-hmm. and make it where you can still be here where you want to be. And you'll still be making more money than 99.99999% of Americans. Yep. But you ain't going to make the big money that you used to make or that you might be able to make somewhere else. Because I promise you there will be a team out there. That has a lot of cap space. They got young stars on rookie deals still. Talking to you, Oklahoma City. And you know what they do? Hmm. Hey, we can't, we're not going to offer you three years, 100 million, or three years, 90 million, or three years, anything like that. But you want to come do one year for 20? And we get you off the books in a year, but yeah. let's come do this one. So then Clay's going to have to pick okay, you want to take less money from Golden State over more years, or just go one year big payday? I think that's ultimately what he has to decide. And if he's smart, you know what he'll decide? Mm-hmm. He'll stay. He'll stay for less money because he'll be happier. He'll be mad. He'll be resentful. He'll be happier. He'll regret leaving if he leaves. The wild thing about all this is he's he's one of the reasons they lost last night. I mean, he's he, he, supposedly one of your stars. He doesn't score. He'd been playing great. Like this, He had been like, playing better. He had been playing in well a, in for a them. different yeah, role, yes. a reduced role. Uh, he is still a useful NBA player. Yeah, he's not done, I don't think. But, right. but I will say, when you watch this last night, I couldn't help but think of a conversation Vernon and I had yesterday, mm. which is postseason basketball is different. Right. That's true. And they start taking things away from you, and they're going to make you do it in a different way. And they're going to take things away from other people and put that burden on you. So it's not just that the like if you're Steph Curry, they're going to try to just eliminate you mm-hmm. from – they're going to make everything harder than it, it ever is game one through 82. All right? And then if you're Clay Thompson, they're going to force things to you, but then take away the things you like. So they're going to, hey, if he's going to score, he can score, but he's going to have to score a different way than he likes to score. Yep. And you know what the byproduct of that was last night? 0 of 10 from the field, 0 of 6 from 3. Now, go look at all his game logs from the regular season. You ain't really going to see that anytime lately. Is it just a coincidence we got the postseason basketball and suddenly he couldn't make a shot? I don't think so. Go look at what he did last year in the playoffs too. Right. It's different. He's still a useful player, which is why there will still be a market for him. But he ain't the same dude. And I don't believe he can be the second best player on a championship team. And, and, and that's what he thinks he is still. Right. And in, in reality, he's a role player on a championship team at best and should be compensated accordingly. But, like, he's got to get his head wrapped around that because he's going to have a situation where somebody's going to give him more money for next season than the Warriors are going to be willing to give him for next season. And 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 you got to pick between that thing. But I'm, I'm, I don't know Clay Thompson at all. I'm telling you, I know people. He will be happier. He will be, at first, resentful, frustrated, disappointed. Ultimately, he'll be happier if he never leaves. If he just stays there and, and accepts a reduced role at a reduced level of compensation. Because, yeah, he can go play somewhere else for more money next year. But at the end, I promise you, if we're doing a documentary on Clay Thompson 10 years, if he leaves and you're doing a documentary on Clay Thompson 10 years later, somewhere in the documentary, you know what he'll say? I wish I wasn't allowed. Yeah, I got an extra $20 million. But that extra $20 million did not change my life in any way. And that's the other thing you always have to remember about these guys. And I ain't pocket watching. I don't blame anybody for for getting as much money as they can get. It's kind of crazy that we set up this system. And it's collectively bargained. I got it. But it's kind of crazy that we set up this system where the players are only allowed to take so much money. And then when they take all of it that they could theoretically get, we say, but you're hurting your team. Mm -hmm. You know? 
We say you're hurting your team if you take all that money. We never say the owners made $400 million profit and you're hurting your team. Right. We just say, hey, you're making too much money, so you're hurting your team. It's kind of wild that's the system we've created. So I never have uh, any uh, animosity towards somebody who says, yo, y'all created a system. It ain't my fault if we can't win if I take all the money I deserve. That's the system you created. Mm-hmm. I'm taking all the money I deserve. You know who did that? Mm. Kobe Bryant. It was a disaster for the Lakers. But that he, he, he was making a point. I'm not going to take less money because you you've created a system that says I have to take less money than my market value to, to create a contender. Change the system. I'm going to make my money. Mm-hmm. I get that on some level. But, but, I'm just, take all that, set it aside. If Clay Thompson takes more money on a shorter deal to leave Golden State, he'll regret it. He just will. Yeah. And I mean, I think with them, too, like, they got way bigger problems than just Clay Thompson. Like, that's, I mean, they got an Andrew Wiggins problem. They got a Draymond Green problem because he wasn't there for what, He's 12 unreliable. games? Yeah. I mean, so here's the trick because okay. you're not at the 10th seat if you have him available all those games. Probably Likely not. Likely not. All yeah. right. But this is where this whole conversation gets a little complicated. It's very easy for somebody, myself included, to look at what they've been over the past few years and say it's over relative to what you want it to be. It's not over relative to being good. They can still be good, but is that what they want? Do you want to waste the last few years of Steph Curry just being good? Maybe, but you got to answer that question. Like if you're going to say, you got to answer that question. Right. If you're okay with it, tell me you're okay with it. And I'll say, dude, then you're fine. But the truth is, over the past few years, they haven't been fine or anything close to what they once were. Understandably so. People have gotten hurt. People have gotten injured. James Wiseman pick didn't work out. Like, it's a lot of stuff that contributed right. to what we're watching right now. Draymond continued to be unreliable, never grew up, couldn't stop getting suspended. Clay became a shell of himself. Wiggins is a shell of himself on some level and disappeared for parts of the season. Uh, they used the number two pick a few drafts ago on James Wiseman. Mm-hmm. That was a disaster. They signed Jordan Poole to a big contract, had to move him because he's fist fighting with his teammates. Like, it's a whole lot getting of... getting punched by his teammates. That too. Yeah. But, you know, he did it with his mouth. That's true. He ran his mouth a little yeah, too much, i Yeah, he started it. He started it. You know, not to take it back to third grade, but he started yeah, it. Yeah, he started it. He started it. Somebody had to finish it. So there's a whole lot of stuff that goes into this. All right? And if you look at the 2022 championship, because that's what some people will say. Like, hey, they just won a championship a few years ago. Right? Mm-hmm. Which is true. But, like, the context matters there. It's not like they were the obvious champion heading into the playoffs. They were the three seed in the West. You know what else happened that year? Mm. Kawhi Leonard never played. You know what else happened that year? Jamal Murray never played. When oh, Jamal Murray right. came back that and played, you know Murray what we year. saw? Yep. They were World back. They were awesome. Yep. Right. So, like, they, they – and, hey, credit to them. They took advantage of a situation and they capitalized on it, like proud champions might. But sometimes it's like – people look at that championship and go god they just won a championship two years ago yeah but under wildly different circumstances Mm -hmm. they were the three seed you know this ain't like they were the one seed and just rolled right through it right kevin durant steph and clay and draymond and all that that's not what this was they were the three seed jamal murray never played Kawhi Leonard never played the grizzlies were probably a little too young to take off man and the thunder weren't quite ready to do that yet either didn't even have the pieces to do that yet so that's what that was beyond that They've missed the playoffs three of the past five years now. If you right. if you label the playoffs as the traditional 16-team playoffs, eight in the West and eight in the East. They've missed it three of the past five years now. This season, they finished 10th in the West. Last season, they finished 6th in the West. So what does that all tell you? They're not good enough. Like right? It's just like, hey, we've right. been looking at this for a while. You're not good enough. Teams that finish 6th in the West aren't going to win a championship. Teams that finish 10th in the West aren't going to win a championship. In fact, teams that finish 10th in the West have never even made the actual playoffs, escaped the play-in tournament. You're not good enough. Here's the problem. They were really good towards the end of this season. Mm-hmm. Um, they went 27-12 and 12 in their final 39. Closed the regular season with a 10-2 and 2 record. Can you trick yourself into thinking you are good enough? If not for Wiggins having family stuff and Draymond being unreliable, if we could just get Draymond to walk between the lines, get Chris Paul to stay healthy, Kaminga takes another jump, Clay takes less money, are we good enough? I think it's easy to trick yourself into thinking that you are, but I don't think you are. I agree. 
I don't think you are either. And the easiest thing to do is just say, then let's run it back with Clay on a smaller mm-hmm. contract. It's the easiest thing to do because it's just because it's the easiest thing to do. Nobody gets their feelings hurt bringing Clay Thompson back unless Steph Curry quietly is ready for him to move on. But there's no indication that Steph thinks that way or feels that way. So it's just the easiest thing to do, right? Mm-hmm. It's the wrong thing to do. I think it's the wrong thing to do, too. Uh, unless, unless I should be clear. That won't be enough to just turn you into a contender. Bringing Clay Thompson back on a small contract might be this right thing to do, mm. but that ain't enough. They, they, no. they, this team will come back and finish somewhere between 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, ninth, 10th in the West, and we'll, you know, what happened the past two years in some form will happen again. That's what I believe. I think so, too. Yeah, I think so, too. I mean, you just look at, like, that roster, and again, like we talked about it, it's it's not just a Clay Thompson problem. Like, Wiggins is a big piece that's making a lot of money, and it's just, I don't, I think that's, I think that's well, done, well, maybe. Well, yeah. It, as far as, like, him being, he was kind of considered what maybe needed, that third-ish what they piece. Needed, yeah. They tried to thread a needle, and I totally understood it. I, you can't, you can second-guess them, because it's easy to second-guess them, but... I try never to be like, ah, you made a mistake, unless I had the foresight to to say I think this is a mistake. Mm-hmm. And I didn't. I understood what they were doing. Although, I, in fairness to me, I did not think they should take James Wiseman. You know who I said they should take? Mm. And they would have been way better off. They would. This actually might have fixed their problem. I said they should take LaMelo Ball. I said LaMelo Ball was the best player in that draft. Now, I might have been wrong because it looks like Anthony Edwards was probably the best player in that draft. Of course, yeah. But I, I would not have taken Wiseman at two. I would have taken LaMelo Ball. Yeah. And I think they'd be better off. But what they tried to do is thread this needle like, okay, Steph, Clay, Draymond are going to age out. But then we're going to have a young Wiseman. Mm-hmm. Kaminga. Jonathan Kaminga. Who's good. And, uh, and, and, and Moody. Mm-hmm. All right. Who's also good. But just, but just I know. good. Yep. But just good. So the idea was those three guys can help the older guys win another championship or two, and then they'll be able to take over, and then it just this this dynasty transitions from one group to the next, but we never really dip. Well, what happened? They missed on Wiseman. Moody's just okay. Kaminga's coming along, but he's not what they had hoped, not yet at least. And so now you're in this weird spot. Mm-hmm. They tried it. I get it. But the mistake was either, with the benefit of hindsight, don't take Wiseman, take take Lamella, and then maybe you got something. Or move the Wiseman pick before it's Wiseman, just the number two mm-hmm. pick in the draft for like some veteran. Yeah. But the reporting suggests that they they did try that. They were interested in it. And the market just wasn't what Man. you needed it to be. So that's why they, drafting for position is never the right, the right way to go. Well, just draft the best player. Well, that's in part what they did. They said we yeah. need a we need a shot blocking, you know, rim running, yep. lob catching big, and like a better version of Kavon Looney. Mm-hmm. And they got somebody who can't play. Yeah. yeah. Got somebody who can't play. And as we know in Memphis, when you use the number two pick on somebody who can't play, damn. It can hurt you. Yes, it can. We've done that here ourselves. Yep. Yep. Anyway, my condolences to the Warriors. Oh, I'm good. Bennett says he's good. <laughs> I hope they figure. Save those condolences, bro. I wanted him to win last night. Uh, Yeah, I mean, I, I did too. Just I like watching Steph Curry. Yeah, I mean. I, w- I felt sorry for him. He's out there having to dribble the ball 70,000 times just to get a shot. I would have rather watched them in the playoffs than the Kings. Yes, I, I agree with the point there. But We the, might not have the Kings in the playoffs. You know that. Oh, yeah, that's we true. Get, oh, uh, we're going to have the Kings in the playoffs. Because Zion can't walk. Yeah, dude. That thing's done. That bro, thing's done. He was so awesome. Yeah, that thing's and done. And then it was just, boom, he had to leave the court. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, that was terrible. What a mess. That was terrible. What a mess. See what Mike Wallace thinks about it. He'll join us next. We know there's only one team you want to watch. And Valley Sports is the place to get your Grizzlies. Experience the comebacks, the buzzer beaters, the can't-miss Memphis-made moments live. Valley Sports keeps the grind going before and after the game, too, with Pete, Brevin, Fish, and Chris on Grizzlies Live. Watch Grizzlies basketball all season long with Valley Sports and streaming on the Valley Sports app. Valley Sports, home of the only team you want to watch. Hard 
Project Royal Flush Tour 2024, Barracuda. November 14th, FedEx Forum. A journey through the hits and timeless classics. The iconic band returns with special guests. Jason Bonham's Led Zeppelin Evening. Tickets on sale now at heart-music.com. Heart with Jason Bonham's Led Zeppelin Evening. Produced by AEG Presents. Justin Timberlake. The Forget Tomorrow World Tour. Live in Memphis. Justin Timberlake. FedEx Forum, Saturday, November 23rd. Get tickets now at LiveNation.com. The brand new single, Selfish, is available to stream and download now. For more, hit up JustinTimberlake.com. Today, we have two very special guests on our program, introducing Lem hey. and Lime. Hello. For Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Thanks for having us. What is Starry Lemon Lime Soda? It's a crisp, clear burst of lemon lime flavor, and it's caffeine-free. Between us, one of you must be a little more important to Starry than the other. Who is it? We're both important. So we could just as easily be Starry Lime Lemon Soda. No, that doesn't sound right. Oh, I like it. So you saying hip-hop could be hop-hip. Works for me. Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Starry hits different. Welcome back, Gary Parish Show, presented by Ortho South. We're the Built for Tough Studio, and on Wednesdays in the second segment, I'm joined by senior editor, Grind City Media. It's Mike Wallace. My mic check on X. He joins me now. Mike Wallace, it's GP. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing good, GP, man. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm going to apologize up front. I may have a couple of uh, internet glitches here, but hopefully it's all good right now. It's all good right now. You don't have to apologize. I've dealt with internet glitches my entire internet life. Um, <laughs> before we talk about last night's play-in games, I do, you were at uh, exit interviews um, earlier mm -hmm. in the week. People can read about that, grindcitymedia.com. Just what was your main takeaway from what we heard from the Grizzlies, including uh, Zach Klein and Taylor Jenkins on, on Monday? Yeah, you know, my, my main takeaway was, you know, since we hadn't heard directly from John ja Morant, you know, wh where is he? What is his status? How is he progressing? He's the most... Uh, you know, the, the most urgent uh, uh, injury case right now, obviously, as he rehabs from that shoulder surgery that he had in January. So, you know, the main thing that came out of it to me was if he's progressing on time and on schedule and when might he be able to resume basketball related uh, activities? We got that answer uh, from from Zach and, and, and from Taylor. If not so from from Ja himself, he didn't want to really elaborate on that. Uh, during his you know individual player session. But having said that, we're looking at June uh, for him to be on schedule towards uh, resuming basketball related activities. And by that time, all of the Grizzlies who had ended the season on the injury report, barring any other future setbacks, should be ready to go. So I think that was the most, uh, you know, the most pressing news matter for me. Uh, the philosophical stuff about Jaron and position, whether it's a four or five, um, we've heard that we're going to continue to see that uh, play out. And also, you know, what the plans are for, for, for uh, this lottery pick. You know, we know the Grizzlies are going to have a top 10 lottery pick. They can get as high as one, two, or three, or, or they can fall back as, as much as uh, seven, eight, nine, or, or somewhere around there, not seven, eight, nine, ten. But at the end of the day, what, it, what the plan is going to be for that draft pick uh, is still to be, to be determined. But we do know Zach Kleiman is a guy that makes moves around the draft, uh, around free agency, and he won't hesitate to, uh, to do any number of things to make sure he maximizes that asset. You mentioned Ja. The one question I get asked more than any other question when people see me at a store or a restaurant or at my kid's baseball practice, it's not how's Josh's shoulder. It's not what do we think they're going to do with Luke Kennard. It's not mm -hmm. what would you do with a lottery pick. It is always the simplest but perhaps the most complex question, which is how's Josh doing? Mm -hmm. You're on the road with these guys. Mm -hmm. And my answer is always, I, I don't really know. Like, you know, mm -hmm. I, I work in the same building as John Morant, but it's not like I see him every day. Um, yeah. I, 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 you know, John Morant doesn't know how I'm doing any more than I know how he's doing. 
But you are <laughs> on the road with these mm-hmm. guys, and you have a better um, grasp for it than most of us. So when mm-hmm. somebody asks you that question, and I bet that they do, how do you yeah. answer it? Yeah, yeah. I, you know what? I say what you say. You know, I, I, I wish I knew. I, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like you say you work in the same building as he does, and but you're not around him every day. I work in the same building as he does, and I might be around him once or twice a week right. uh, from that standpoint. And, you know, what he does when he's outside of that building, I have no clue. I do know that I see his his dad quite a bit. You know, I talk to uh, and communicate with uh, Uncle Phil uh, when, when I see him occasionally. And those are the guys that kind of shape really how, what I think about how Ja is doing. And, you know, those guys are like, look, man, this is a young man that came into a lot in a hurry. And we're all adjusting to that. We're all... Uh, from this small area in South Carolina. Um, you know, yeah, basketball has been around our lives. We've been around celebrities. You know, hell, T. Morant played basketball in high school with, you know, obviously uh, Ray Allen. So he's he knows what it's like to be around big-time athletes. Um, but to have that kind of money where you can change generations' lives and, and so much money where you don't know, you know, like there's no limit to what you can spend on anything you want. That's hard to adjust to. And, and Ja has gone through that. Maturity wise, the one thing that I do wonder and I hope that 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 sense of entitlement um, that kind of got sideways with him, I I think he needs to mature a little bit more from that. But everything else, man, I I see the good signs. I see that he's showing up for work. I see he's putting in a commitment in the weight room and training room. I see he's lifting up his teammates um, both on and off the floor. I see him out, you know, when they're on the road and, you know, he's not trying to be the life of the party or anything like that. He's just trying to have a simple dinner you know, with some of his teammates. And, and, you know, those things that I've seen, they've all been encouraging. So hopefully we turn a corner from that moving into the summer and into next season. One last thing on exit interviews. Derrick Rose did speak and made it clear Mm -hmm. his intention is to return next season, that he's been working behind the scenes. And whether it was Ja or Jaron or other people within the organization, they do tend to go out of their way to talk about Derrick's value to this mm-hmm. franchise and that locker room, because I do think that's been a, a topic of conversation in, in other circles. Like if he's not giving you that much on the court and mm-hmm. he's often unavailable, what is the real value? I just found it interesting that um, it's easy for people who aren't in that locker room to say, if he's not giving you anything on the court, there's, there might not be value there, but it, mm-hmm. it, 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 it it struck me as notable that the people who are actually in the locker room say, no, this guy matters here. He's meaningful here, whether he's playing or not. What do you, what do you make of that? Uh, you know what? It's, it's the one thing I, I admire most about Derek is that everything he's doing with the Grizzlies is sort of understated. He's doing it from an understated uh, standpoint. You know, everyone knew that he came in to sort of be this veteran who was a youngest MVP in, 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 in league history. And, you know, he learned from offseason issues as well as injuries and the perseverance and all those things. So he could be a rah-rah guy in the locker room and, you know, sort of a locker room leader and politician. But that's not what Derek is doing. Like, he's not doing it by what he's saying and trying to make a statement. He's just doing it by showing up every day. And, and when when he's told he's going to get 12 minutes, he says, all right, I'm going to prepare two nights earlier to get ready for my 12 minutes. And everyone's going to see how I prepare. You know, when it's time to talk about family dynamics and, and things of that nature and how you uh, handle big time endorsements and shifting away from big time endorsements, Derek can offer those kind of things, but he's not he's not going up in anyone's face saying, hey, I'm Derek Rose. I did this. He's waiting for them to come to him. And when they don't come to him, he's just fine with that. He, he goes to his corner of the locker room and he's just a veteran that does it by example. So, you know, the fact that and he's not just doing it with the players, he's doing it with the community, too. Like he was one of the earliest guys and the quickest guys to go to foundation, our foundation department, our community engagement and say, what can I do to help in the community? You know, I took a, 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 a box full of uh, the Derrick Rose chess sets over to Grizzlies Prep with some Derrick Rose posters because he found out that they had a, a junior chess club at Grizzlies Prep uh, Middle School. So those are the kind of things that he's doing to resonate just beyond the locker room and beyond on the court. But he does still feel like he has another season or two left if he can get his body right. And that's what he's focusing on this summer is his core, getting his core body uh, correct so he can sustain uh, a little bit more than what he did this season. Moving on to the NBA postseason, we got our first two playing games last night. The first one was competitive. The second mm-hmm. one, not so much. The Warriors' season is over. Klay Thompson is an unrestricted free agent after going 0 of 10 in what really might have been his last game as a member of the Golden State Warriors. Let's just start there. Do you think yeah. that was his last game as a member of the Golden State Warriors? 
I, I want to say it is. Uh, all the signs indicate that, you know, that might be it, that that probably is his last game, especially he's a guy that plays with a lot of pride. Like it's it was tough for him to go to the bench when Steve Kerr and the front office thought it was best for him to come off the bench. You know, he's a guy that plays with that chip on his shoulder, always has. You know, he was one of the ones that resisted all the hoopla that surrounded, you know, Kevin Durant coming to the team. And he was like, OK, I'm still going to be Clay. He's not going to take my opportunities and he went out there and proved that you know he could still do it what i will say is this from 2014 15 to 2022 23 when they won their last championship no team has impacted the nba uh in this era than the golden state warriors that's not saying a whole lot but i will say this no team has changed the game of basketball in the modern era more so than the Golden State Warriors in this uh, this dynasty that they've had. Not only did they change the way the, the teams look at how the three-point line is viewed, they changed the way how teams train, they train, changed the way how front offices are managed, they invented the analytics department uh, across the league, and how you scout and evaluate talent all changed because of what the Warriors have done. And they've done that just by being one of the most efficient, one of the most professional, and one of the most classy organizations on and off the floor. But they've also done it because of that dynamic group that they had there, uh, led by Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, and Draymond Green. So kudos to them because they really looked at you. We, we look at basketball differently now uh, in this era because of what Golden State has done. I, I can't sit here and say I know what's most important to Clay Thompson any more than I can say I know what's most important to the Golden State Warriors front office. But from a distance, this feels like one of those situations where – they should just both sit down and recognize neither one of them wants this to end badly. Just, mm -hmm. hey, Clay, we don't want to lose you for nothing. We also can't pay you what somebody else will probably be willing to pay you on a shorter deal because mm -hmm. we have championship aspirations and it's just not good business. You can go make more money somewhere else. You know that and we know that, but you don't want to. You mm -hmm. want to win here. We want to win here with you. Let's compromise, work this out, and stay together. That just seems like such the easy, easy decision to reach. And yet mm -hmm. I know it, with, because of pride and other things, it might be hard to get there. Well, what you just said, Gary, is what Steve Kerr basically alluded to all season long when he knew this was coming. He started to talk about it last night. Bob Myers, their former GM, said the same thing through different spots that he's done with ESPN as an analyst now. That's how the conversation will be shaped from the organization standpoint. But you also got to look at it like this. What's best long term for the Warriors? They've won their four championships, right? So bringing Clay back at a big number, and his number can't be less than Draymond Green's. And Draymond's at Four, you know, four years, $100 million. That's $25 million a year. Let if me Clay, tell you there, if they give him that contract, it's a mistake. But okay, so, but the thing is, they gave it to Draymond. Yeah. And you and, and people can say, like Clay, in Clay's mind, he's every bit as important, if not more important, to what the Warriors are doing or have done as Draymond Green. So if you're going to ask him to take less than Draymond, and you've seen they can't, they still can't rely on Draymond to be healthy and on the court from these suspensions. Like he's been up and down since he signed that contract. He had a suspension since he signed that contract. So if you're Clay and this is about business, you cannot go in there and value yourself at less than what Draymond is getting because you feel like you're a, 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 you're providing more at this stage of your career than what Draymond is providing. Now, having said that, the Golden State Warriors will probably, this will probably go along the ways that it went for the last couple of years when uh, 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 Kobe Bryant was with the Lakers. Right. You give him the legacy contracts that they're going to continue to give Steph Curry because he's going to bring people to that building. And you say, we're going to go into a soft rebuild, but we're going to go out with this guy. This one guy is our singular superstar uh, uh, that's going to draw the attraction. So I think this is it, but there's no shame in it, man. Like it can't last forever. And uh, they had a remarkable run. I don't even know if you bring these guys back, if they're going to continue to do what they've done. They had a, they had a great finish considering everything that they've gone through, but they just don't have it anymore. And their time is up and there's no shame in that. Yeah, if Clay came into the negotiation saying, I'm more important to this thing than Draymond, I deserve at least the Draymond contract. I, If I'm in charge, I just say, Clay, we hear you, and you might be right, but what we've learned over the past year is that we made a mistake giving Draymond yes. that contract, yes. and we, yes. cannot make the, we cannot make another mistake. Like, we hear yes. you, but that we, we, we made a mistake, and we can't make another mistake. But I'll let them have that hard conversation. <laughs> They'll have it soon enough. Um, yeah. Last thing before I let you go. 
Pelicans Lakers game was fun. LeBron wins it. I think that's great for the NBA because now we get Lakers Nuggets and evidence that the NBA also believes it's great for the NBA is that guess what we're doing in prime time on Saturday night? It's the two seed against the seven seed Nuggets and Lakers. New Orleans uh, is now reduced to fighting for its playoff life in mm -hmm. a game against Sacramento and perhaps having to do it without Zion Williamson. Zion was having what some have called the best game of his professional career last night. He had 40. He had New Orleans in it against L.A. And then he just comes down, grimaces, goes to the locker room. That's never a good sign. Just how deflating must that have been you know, in the second half for New Orleans to not only lose a game you could have won at home against LeBron and the Lakers, but also lose your star. It, it's, it's man, that was that was just deflating, as you said. That was a great word to use there because it, it just felt horrible. Because when he came down, you still didn't know, hey, what's wrong with Zion? I still don't see it. I still and the way he threw the towel down and yeah. stomped off the court, I couldn't tell it was a leg injury, uh -huh. right? He looked like he had a temper tantrum more <laughs> so than anything else. So, you know, this, this has to be something pretty painful and pretty like he knew immediately yeah. I cannot go on right so if he knew that um then then you got to be cautious about what happened but not only the Zion issue what was going on with Brandon Ingram I know he had the knee stuff that he's been coming back from they couldn't play Jonas Valanciunas down the stretch and Anthony Davis was getting every offensive rebound at the basket and second chance opportunity uh CJ McCollum just fell off the end of a cliff in, in terms of his production D'Angelo Russell Clearly outplayed them uh, when he needed to, when they needed to down the stretch. This New Orleans Pelicans team, as 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 good as their season has been, it's kind of cratering at the absolute worst time, man. But they still have one more shot uh, because uh, the Sacramento Kings are going to come in there on Friday without Malik Monk, you know, what I mean, without uh, Herder, and they're going to be shorthanded from that standpoint. So it's going to be anybody's game. But at the end of the day. You know, that, it, it's, it's, that's tough for New Orleans to see Zion go out like that. I hope he can come back, if not in this next game, at least be available if they win to go into the playoffs. That is Mike Wallace, Grind City Media. Make sure you're reading everything, grindcitymedia.com. He's on X, at my Mike Check. Thanks, brother. I'll see you soon. Appreciate you being right. here. Thank you, brother. Bye-bye. That's Mike Wallace, grindcitymedia.com. Um. I know we don't like New Orleans either, but like we don't like watching Zion limp off like that, do we? No, we that was we don't that root was for lame. other. That's a small market Southern city. Yeah. If we can't find empathy for a small market Southern city, I think we've lost our way, Bennett. Well, I think too is they were going to win that game. I I feel like they were going to win that game. Our king was involved. I know, but Zion was was doing some stuff. He's like, awesome. I mean, he had 40 points, yeah. man. And, and they had all the momentum before he goes out. And he looks awesome, too. Yeah, like, it's is. not just that he's producing. Like, he looks... Like, yep. if we're going to spend... so, Like, in fairness, if we're going to spend years talking about Zion looks like a fatty... Yep. He looks great. He looks great now. We should say he looks great. Say it. Say he looks great. He looks great. No, he looks great. Say you like the way Zion looks. I like the way Zion looks. Say, you like, he, his, say you like his belly. That belly, I want that belly. I would like kill for Zion. I, I belly. want that belly. I kill yeah, for Zion. Maybe belly. once upon a time I wouldn't have wanted that belly. I want that belly. I think at any point in time I would have. I would have wanted belly. his belly at any time. I would always take his Zion's biggest belly. era. I would have taken worst. that belly. That is worse. Yeah, that's the funny thing about yeah. Zion's fat. Yeah, he's never not looked better than me. That's so true. You know? Same. It's yeah, hard to deal with. Yeah, that's whole world's out there calling Zion fat, and you're like at, at his fattest. At his fattest, he was better looking than me. No question about it. it. Yeah, that was tough because, I mean, that's going to be something if he doesn't play in this next game and they get eliminated by the Kings, that's just going to be something that always sticks with him that, that okay, but he always gets hurt. That's mm -hmm. It's always going to stay with him until he doesn't and they go on a playoff run. So I hate that, especially being a fan of a team that's had a ton of injury issues like that. This, this type of thing happens to us all the time. It happens to us all the time. So yeah, I hated seeing that last night again. Like I, I'm a Pelicans hater a little bit, but that that sucked because I think that that is a playoff team with him. And now I think they're I think they're done. At the very I think they're least, done. And the Ingram thing's weird too. They won't play him. That was that yeah, that was so weird. And how can you even? And maybe it comes out that he was hurt too. I don't know. He had been dealing with some stuff, but it well, didn't it, feel like it. It well, didn't feel this. like it. Summer Olympics, he gets benched. Yeah. Play in, benched. What does that say about you? Yeah. And so then what do you do if you're the Pelicans? Like I don't know, Bennett. Yeah. I mean, you build around Zion Williams. Of course that's you do. what you do. The reporting <laughs> yeah. this morning is that it's uh the Pelicans have described it as a hamstring injury. 
mm-hmm. and imaging is going to get done today. But yeah, like, you no. don't usually, you don't. Hey, listen, I'm not a professional basketball player, but my experience in dealing with them, you don't usually have to leave a game with a hamstring injury on a Tuesday to come back ready to play on a Friday. Yeah, and that's the thing is, you saw people last night. Some people saying. Dude, you have to just fight through that. Like you got, you got to fight through that. Your, your playoff lives are on the line. People and, and, who it, people who say you have to fight, you don't think Zion Williamson wants to fight through that? I never understand when people say shit like that. You can't. You the, can't. With a hamstring, you can't. People always think you could just play unless right. they see you with a bullet wound. Right. They think you should just play through it. Yeah. Like it, you can't. It's not soreness. It's <laughs> like you can't move your leg properly. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. You don't think like I, that's the. If you want to bang on Zion for always being hurt, bang on Zion for always being hurt. But if you want to call him the P-word because he didn't continue to play last night, like you don't think there's you don't think there's nothing in the world Zion wanted right. more than to play finish that game last night, other than like an adult film star, maybe. <laughs> you know? She was getting wild last night. Was she? I yeah, lost track of her. She was getting wild last night. I lost track of her. What did she say? She was just getting wild on. There's a video. What did she say? She's just getting wild, dude. I've seen her be wild. Yeah, she's just saying, you know, is, you know. She still talks? Oh, she's still talking. Yeah. What's her name? Mariah Mills. I forgot about her name. I forgot. Yeah. She just, I just, I unfollowed her or did whatever I did. Yeah. And she just like, I know, out of sight, out of mind. I didn't even know she was still a thing. She's still a thing, huh? Yeah. Mariah Mills. Oh, she's still out there. She's dude. still popping off. I mean, dude. In fairness, this is like how you how you how you keep your fame. It's also how you never get another professional athlete. I know. I know she's hanging off for dear life. I mean, I feel like she's hustling backwards a little bit. She really is. I like, know. Like if you're it's whole, helping her in the short term, but yeah. long term, this is a bad move. It's yeah. like it's like like all jokes aside, that that strip club in Denver. Mm-hmm. Releasing that footage of Ja in that room. Yeah, That's man. Bananas. That's wild. You know why? Yeah. Because if I'm a Bronco or an Avalanche or a Nugget mm-hmm. or a Rocky, yep. that's the last place I'm going. Hold up. TMZ can call or the New York Daily News yep. can call and they can get, there's cameras in this place because of course there is and they can, get, they can get footage of me just by like offering somebody two grand. Yeah. No way, buddy. Like, okay, cool. Somebody just made $2,000 or $5,000 or $10,000 selling surveillance footage from a strip club, but guess what you just did? Make sure nobody on a $40 million a year contract is coming back in your strip club. That's right. That ain't what I would do. Mariah Mills, a little bit the same thing. Oh, that's great. You're getting your jokes off on Zion, but, uh, you know, if you ever wanted to see if you could get a professional athlete to buy you a condo again, this ain't the way to do it. Because if I'm looking at Mariah Whit Mills, you know what I'm looking at? Huh. I'm saying, yeah, I would, but... I ain't getting involved in this one. No. I bet I can find one that looks just like her with a quieter mouth. Mm hmm. This feels bad for Zion. Man. Feel bad for Zion, bad too. For Zion. Now he's hurt. Yeah. So, anyway, they're going to get imaging done today. Then we'll know the results because that's the way it works. Yep. But I wouldn't be encouraged. Would you be encouraged? No. Right now, New Orleans, one and a half point favorite on Friday night at home against the Kings. But Zion Williamson's availability remains undetermined. When we come back, Jonathan Gavoni, Jeremy Wu, they updated their mock draft, ESPN.com. Grizzlies are picking seventh because that's what the projections have right now. You want to know who they're picking? You want to know who the ESPN.com has got the Grizzlies picking seventh? I'd love to know. You're going to have to stick around. We'll do that next. It's the Gary Parish Show presented by Ortho South. Now for a limited time, the new $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps are here at Sonic. Who could deny a crispy chicken tender with bold flavors like hickory barbecue and cheesy Baja? And we can't forget the crisp lettuce and melty cheese to make the perfect bite. Wrap yourself up with some TLC, tender, love, and chicken for only $1.99. Sonic $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps. Tax not included, limited time only at participating Sonic drive-ins. Let's face it, there's a lot of trash talk in basketball. But the great teams let their performance do the talking. Like Ford F-150 with Pro Power on board. A class exclusive industry first feature that turns your truck into a mobile generator and leaves the competition speechless. Ford F-150, official truck of the Grizzlies. Greatness starts here at your Mid-South Ford dealer. Class is full-size pickups under 8,500 pounds, GBWR.
Are you a healthcare professional looking for a new experience? Look no further than Travel Nurses, Inc. Our extensive network of healthcare facilities across the country offers you the opportunity to discover new destinations while pursuing your passion. We provide competitive compensation, flexible contracts, and dedicated assistance. So join professionals and start your next adventure today. Visit our website at travelnursesinc.com for more information. Life Care Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At Life Care, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at lifecareamb.com. can be unpredictable, unforeseen, and unscheduled, and Ortho South understands this better than anyone. Since your injuries don't make appointments, you don't need to either, and that's because Ortho South welcomes walk-ins during the weekdays and the evenings and even on Saturday. So next time an unforeseen injury makes an unscheduled appearance in your life, visit orthosouth.org to find your nearest urgent care location. Just walk in, and Ortho South will take care of everything, especially you. Learn more at orthosouth.org. That's orthosouth at orthosouth.org. Now, I got five more things you need to know. Number one. Jeremy Wu, Jonathan Gavoni, their NBA draft analyst over at Mm ESPN.com, and they have updated their 2024 NBA mock draft, Big Bet Bennett. They got the Grizzlies scheduled to pick seventh, because that's what the projections are right now. Yes. We'll have a lottery at some point, and the Grizzlies could pick uh, as high as number one perhaps all the way down at number nine, somewhere in between. But right now it's seventh based on projection. Okay. And would you like to know who Jeremy Wu and Jonathan Gavoni had the Grizzlies taken at number seven? Hit me with it. Reed Shepard from Kentucky. Can I interest you in a Reed Shepard from Kentucky? Sure. Yeah, sure. You could interest me in a Reed Shepard from Kentucky. So here's – we just talked about this uh, a couple of times. Like where I stand on drafts and, and high draft picks is – I don't care what your need is because I don't, I don't, whatever the need is, I don't care. Take the best player. Mm -hmm. That's all I care about in an NBA draft. I I know that we have a star point guard and Reed Shepard's listed as a point guard or a combo guard. He's going to be a combo. He's going to be a smaller combo guard who plays a lot with the ball in his hands eventually. I I don't care. I don't either. No, I want the best player who's going to be the best. That's what I want. Doesn't matter to me. You will never. You ready for this? Never. And I've been saying this for years. You will never draft somebody, them turn into a star, or exceed the slot at which you drafted them, and then say something like, man, this player really is great, but you know, he's a point guard, and we already had a really great point guard. You'll never say that. Right, like you just talked about it with the Warriors taking James Wiseman, and that obviously was a mistake at number two. And you know why? In part, in part, in part, because they thought they needed a five, right? And they didn't think they needed a one. So why would you take Lamelo Ball? You know why? Because Lamelo Ball's six foot seven. He could play with the ball in his hands. He, he could play beside Steph Curry and 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 provide size at the other guard position. Um, when Steph goes to the bench, he's your backup point guard. When Steph needs to just run off of screens, you got somebody else to handle the ball, to bring it up the court, to take some of that burden off of him. But you didn't think you needed a point guard. You know what you needed more than anything else? A great player. That's it. Yep. Regardless of what position, you you would you you would have rather had the greatest backup point guard than James Wiseman. All right. The most famous example of this, you know what it is. Everybody references it. Michael Jordan. The Portland Trailblazers. They needed a big. Or they didn't need another two guard because they had Clyde Drexler. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Like having Clyde Drexler is a pretty awesome thing. That's right. That's having a Hall of Fame two guard. For sure. Like who wouldn't want a Clyde Drexler? Anybody. Unless you could have a Michael Jordan. Fair point. <laughs> you don't take Michael Jordan because you already have Clyde Drexler. Well, congrats on missing out on six championships at least. Mm-hmm. I'm with you. 
always take best player available, particularly in the lottery. There are there are moments where I, I can skew the other direction. Like, all right, it's the 23rd pick, and what are we really doing? And we kind of do need a, you know, a big. Yes. And I'm, I'm, open to, I'm open to that. I think making clear rules for yourself, you just, you trap yourself. Yep. It's a little bit like, um, I just think when you start saying we, we absolutely have to do this or we absolutely can't do that, then you leave yourself open to, to making mistakes. So I would never do that. You know, some people say things now like, well, I would never take a center. You've heard this. You've heard like actual NBA people say this in recent years. I'd never take a center with a top five pick. Oh, really? Well, Victor Womanyama, you wouldn't take him? Right. With a top five pick? And the draft before that, Chet Holmgren, you wouldn't take him with a top five pick? So what are you talking about? What you mean is there aren't many centers I would take with a top five pick. But there are some. Yeah, like if Donovan Klingon is the best player at number seven, like, take and him. he's there, take Donovan Klingon. That sounds By the great. way, in this mock draft, he's not there. That, he's moving up. He's gone at number three in this one. Yeah, he's moving up. So, like, we're about to, in, in an era where people love to say, I would never take a center with a top five pick, we're probably about to have at least three straight drafts with centers going in the top five. Right, right. And, and by the way, the first two, you wouldn't regret them at all. Chet Holmgren, you wouldn't undo that, would you? No. No. Wimby, you wouldn't undo that, obviously. Not. Now, Klingon's probably about to go in the top five. So, I think making hard rules for yourself gets you in trouble. So, I don't want to say I would never draft for position. But I, I lean toward drafting best player available. Yeah. And if Reed Shepard is the best player available, that's what I would do. For people who are unfamiliar, he was the consensus national freshman of the year. At least he won that award more often than anybody mm -hmm. else won the award. He came off of Kentucky's bench, which is crazy. <laughs> Just as crazy as Devin Booker coming off of Kentucky's bench. What? Like in what world? I know. This is where, like, John Calipari, like, he outsmarts himself. Uh -huh. Like, he thinks he knows what he's doing without recognizing every other coach at every other level in basketball starts their best players. Find me another example of arguably a team's best player coming off of their bench at any level of basketball. Seventh grade basketball, the big three, WNBA, college, you name it. Imagine if the Nuggets were the reigning champs and their best player came off the bench. You'd mm. be like, what? That's what John Calipari does. He brought Devin Booker off the bench. Then he brings Reed Shepard. I don't know why Reed Shepard came off the bench. People would ask me during the season. So why is Reed Shepard coming off the bench? I don't know. <laughs> well, is it like something in the data? No. No, there's nothing that suggests he should be coming off the bench. Every great Kentucky lineup, you know, you can get in and break down the combinations. He's in it. Every one of them. Yep. Every one of them. Well, you know, he gets caught on ball screens every once in a while. Oh, yeah, okay. He shoots 53% from three. So let's let him get caught up on ball screens every once in a while. It's so odd to me that in college basketball, what you what your your deficiencies dictate your playing time way more than they do in the NBA. Mm -hmm. In the NBA, you know what people say? Mm. He can do this, so we're just going to live with the other stuff. In college, it's like we can't live with the other stuff because he can't right. do this. It's like almost backwards. So Reed Shepard comes off the bench, but he shot fifty. Nearly 53% from three. He shot 53%, nearly 54% from the field. Um, he's on the smaller side. Like he's six, listed at 6'3". He's probably not that. He's probably 6'2". But he's a better athlete than you think. He gets stereotyped a little bit because, uh, you know. He he's looks a white like, guy. Yeah. You know, he looks like he could be my kid. Mm -hmm. So he gets stereotyped a little bit. Sure. Right? He's a better, he's a pretty good athlete. Okay. He can jump. He can move. Um, he averaged 2.5 steals per game in 28.9 minutes. That's like a major factor in analytics-driven evaluations. Like deflection, steals, blocks, particularly among guards. Because mm -hmm. it shows that you're a different level athlete. Your arms and you're moving. And it shows stuff that they like to see. Yep. Well, he, he all that stuff's there. And I just watch it, man. And there's moments where he just comes down the court, and I'm not comparing him to this person. I'm just saying, this is what it reminds me of. If you go back and watch Steph Curry at Davidson, everything you saw in the NBA was there, every bit of it. The manipulating ball screens and pulling up in transition, quick catch and shoot, all that stuff. People just wonder, like, yeah, but is he really a point guard? 
And uh, is he too, like, just physically, you know, small, skinny? And, you know, is he a great athlete? Well, coming out, you ready for this? They're similarly sized, all right? Shepard's probably got a little bit better body the mm-hmm. same age because Steph was very thin. And Shepard's probably a better athlete. Probably yeah. is. Yep. And you'll watch him come down, all like all the shot making stuff, it's there. He'll come down in transition, boom. Off the catch, boom. Manipulate a ball screen, get to the elbow, a little floater. He's got all that stuff. I think he's going to be really good. Okay. Really good. You're talking me into it. Now, the question becomes, is he even going to be in the draft? And it wouldn't be a question if his name was anything other than Reed Shepard and he was playing anywhere other than Kentucky. But, you know, he's a legacy student athlete. Mom and dad both play basketball there. Mm -hmm. And there's like, I remember talking to Mike Conley. Um, after he entered the 2007 NBA draft. Because if you remember after the national championship game, Florida beat Ohio State, you wouldn't remember this. But I, re- I remember it. Um, Mike, they asked him, you know, because they're you ask all these people, Daquan Cook, Greg Oden, like, yep. this, oh, you come back to school? And it's like, you know, they never say they're not. But you know with Oden what's happening. and You're pretty sure with Daquan Cook what's happening. Mike Conley, you know what he said? Hmm. Right after the national championship, of course I'm coming back to school. What are you talking about? Come, of course, I'll be back at Ohio State. As you know, he did not go back to school. And it's because very quickly he was told, you realize you're a top five pick, right? Mm. I'm, subsequently, years later, I talked to Mike about this. He never once even thought about being a one-and-done player. It was not on his radar at all. Like coming up, and I, I, like I started covering, like being around Mike Conley when he was like 16 years old. Mm-hmm. He was never supposed to be that. He was Greg Oden's good teammate. That's what he was. He's like, oh, yeah. like if you were talking about grassroots basketball, it's like, hey, you seen the team from Ohio? Yeah, the one with Greg Oden. Yeah, and they got a pretty good point guard too. Oh yeah, Mike Conley. Dad, dad was in the Olympics. That's all that was. He was never. He was a little guard, good athlete, but not supposed to be one and done. He was not thought of that way. But then ultimately, they were like, dude, if you go in this draft, you'll probably be picked third or whatever it was. So he's like, I gotta go then. Yep. Reed Shepard's very similar. I don't think his dream has ever been to be a one-and-done player. You know what his dream has been? And it's not true for all these guys. Like, you know what Rob Dillingham's dream is? Mm. To play in the NBA. You know what Jacoby Walter's dream is? To play in the NBA. You know what Reed Shepard's dream is, really? Be a star at Kentucky. I think so. He just wanted to be a star at Kentucky. Now you just had a coaching regime change. Right. But guess who they just hired? Mm. Your dad's teammate at Kentucky. Oh, wow. Okay. Your I didn't dad's, know that. Your dad's lifelong friend. Your huh. dad's. A guy your dad's been friends with for nearly 30 years. That's interesting. Is now the head coach of the Kentucky Wildcats. So if your dream has always been to play, like your dream's never, a lot of these guys, Mm -hmm. most of these guys, I swear when I go talk to them, they don't talk about the Final Four ever. It's always like you're 15 years old. What are your dreams? It's never like I want to go to UConn and win a title. Right. It's like I want to go to the NBA. I got to get to the league. All right, well, here you've got this unique situation. I don't think this young man's dream was to go to the league. I mean, eventually, sure. His goal was really like, can I go to Kentucky and play? He was a McDonald's All-American, but he wasn't like ranked in the top 10 of his class. Mm -hmm. He's in the 70s at 24-7 sports. So he's in a really interesting situation now. The smart thing to do, the thing almost anybody else would do, is enter the NBA draft. You want to know why? If he is picked seventh, do you know what he's guaranteed to make next year? Mm. $5.7 million. Damn. And in the second year, it's $5.99 million. And in the third year, which is a team option, but the teams almost always pick it up, and they would with him, it's another $6 million. So he is guaranteed, like, like quite literally guaranteed a, nearly $12 million if he's picked seventh. And then assuming that third-year option gets picked up, that's another six. So even in the era of name, image, and likeness, like you hear about – People making eight hundred thousand or one point one million. Ain't nobody in college basketball making five point seven million dollars to play a year of college basketball. So, on a surface level, you'd have to leave money on the table, and also like it adds a year to you. It, it makes a year delay when you get to that net free agency. When you get the, hey, is it time to get the two hundred fifty million dollar contract? Well, you got to wait on it, as opposed to if you go now, you get there a year earlier. It's tough. What do you do? What would you do? What would you advise if this were your son? Oh, I would say it's tough. leave. I would say leave. You got. You, I would. Say, you, you, there's a. There's a, coaching change, and I know he just hired the guy that's his dad's friend. But it's like, 
it's it's screaming time to go. What if what if your son looks at you and says, "Dad, I hear you," and I know you're right, but I can dribble, pass, and shoot, mm -hmm. and that's not going away. I must still be the same basketball player I am a year from now that I am today. Yeah. In fact, I'll be better. And I know that I'm risking something and I know that I will make less money next year. But dad, you've always told me not to be motivated by money, be motivated by my heart. Where do I want to be? What do I want to do? Mm -hmm. I want to be a Kentucky Wildcat. I don't want my last game at Kentucky being a loss to Oakland. Your legacy, dad, was you won a national championship. Mm -hmm. You won a national championship at Kentucky. That's your legacy. That's your life. Yeah. I don't want my life to be. I played one year at Kentucky. It was the last year of John Calipari. We lost to Oakland. I don't know that I can make it right, but I'll, I'll regret not trying to. I'll regret leaving now. If I, I'll always wonder if I should have stayed. And I'm willing to risk millions of dollars to not have to wonder about that the rest of my mm -hmm. life. Now what? Um, son, I, uh, I really, that's a really noble, noble stance that you've taken there. And I respect that. Um, what I would say is what they like to say is money doesn't grow on trees and but what you better does? take that damn money you or you're not coming back to this family. All seriousness. Mm -hmm. Like, I know you're joking around all seriousness. Like as a parent, uh -huh. I think if your son does say more or less what I just said to you, yeah, you have to get out of his way. Uh, yeah, I mean you don't want the resent, you don't want the resent. But damn, dude, you have to get out of his way. If that is that's really millions how it feels. of dollars. If you make him go to the NBA draft when he doesn't want to and it doesn't go well, or even if it does, it's going to come back on you. I think you can advise. Like, and I'm, I'm, like, I'm, like. I've been in parent parental advisory roles, all right? Yeah, yeah. I'm not the best at it. I'm much Nah, I suck at that. I'm much better playing Jeff Shepard than I am playing Gary Parrish, yep. if I'm being honest. Yeah, yeah. Right? But I really do believe if your son comes to you and says, Dad, I understand everything you're saying. And I also understand that next year's draft is stronger than this year's draft. And if I go seventh in this draft, it might be twelfth in next year's draft, just based on the quality of prospect in next year's draft. As opposed to this, I understand mm. all of it. I'm not being stupid about this. I'm not telling you you're wrong. I'm just telling you that it's not what I want to do. And if I, if 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 I leave college right now, I'm scared that I'll regret it forever. I want to do this at least one more year. I I, I might never get to be a star basketball player, the best on the team in my home state. In fact, I know I'll never get that again. If I walk away from it now and I don't want to do that, you better get out of his way. Yeah. I sure. think you can advise, 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 but at that point, you got to get out of his way. You know what? A, another example of this, and I don't have the ins and outs of it, so I, I'm speaking a little bit out of turn, but I imagine this is true. I bet you Rachel Heck's father, who spent every day of her childhood taking her to the practice range and watching her just bang on golf balls nonstop and watching her, con I bet you there's a part of him that doesn't want her to not see it through right but he clearly came she clearly came to him and said i just don't want to do this mm -hmm. and at some point he obviously said okay and gave her the blessing that's true and I, i'd love to talk to him someday about that because i bet you on some level deep down whether he ever acknowledges it or not it like i bet he had dreams for his daughter yeah and but he loves his daughter so much you don't want to ever make her go do something she doesn't want to do simply because She's talented enough to do it and, and has the opportunity to do it. I bet you Rachel Heck's father could have a great conversation right now with Reed Shepard's father. So I don't know what he's going to do. Under normal circumstances, it's obvious you just go to the NBA. Like it's just, come on, what are we doing? We're not sitting here right now wondering about what Rob Dillingham is going to do or Jacoby Walter is going to do. But this is such a unique situation. I don't know that it's obvious what you should do. It's obvious financially what you should do. But I don't think that's the most important thing always. And I, I, I really do believe if Reed Shepard has his heart, his heart made up on coming back to Kentucky to play for Mark Pope, to play for the university he dreamed of playing at, if that's in his heart, if that's really what he wants to do, I think it would be a mistake to 
prevent him from doing it or for him to not see it through, even if ultimately it proves to be a financial mistake. You could probably live with the regret of making a bad decision easier than you could deal with the regret of not seeing something through that you wondered about. I bet it's easier to deal with the bad decision if it turns out bad because it's like, hey, at least I know I did what I did what I my heart told me to do. I bet that's easier to deal with than it is to just wonder the rest of your life should I have stayed. I don't know what he's going to do, but I can. This is one where I see both sides of it. It's not obvious to me. Either way, if he's in the draft, perhaps he'll be a Memphis Grizzly, and uh, I wouldn't mind that. I think he's going to be great. Number two, WNBA draft ratings are in. They smashed records. Hmm. I thought they might. 2.45 million viewers. That's like more than your average college basketball game. It is more than any WNBA game that has been televised um, in more than uh, four years. Oh, how about that? So like what, like NBA fin- WNBA Finals game, whatever, put it on. It doesn't do more than the draft. Yeah, that suggests to me that what we talked about yesterday is probably going to be true, that you're going to see this season the highest rated WNBA games at certain points. But Okay, will a WNBA game get a higher rating than the draft? Um, I think it just depends. It's got to be the perfect storm of of. It's got to be Caitlin stars. Clark yeah, and, yeah. and Sabrina. Yeah. Caitlin Clark and, and the Aces. Angel Reese. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. It's got to be yeah. something like that. I I don't I haven't looked at the WNBA schedule, but like they would be smart to, hey, let's launch this thing mm-hmm. with Caitlin Clark against the Aces. Yeah. Caitlin Clark against Angel Reese. You know, like, hey, if these college stars are the ones everybody wanted to watch, well, let's put them against each other right from the jump, yep. night one. I don't know what they're going to do, but that's an encouraging number. It smashed everything. 2.45 mm-hmm. million is a big number for, for you know, live television um, outside of professional football and the Oscars and Final Four and stuff like that. So big number. But will it translate to people actually watching WNBA games? Did people tune in the other night because they wanted to watch the WNBA draft or because they wanted to watch Caitlin Clark get picked? If I'm being honest, we tuned in to watch Caitlin Clark get picked. Yeah. And but, then we kind of bowed out of it. Yeah, but they I mean, she was the number one pick. So they wouldn't have gotten that number if, right. if it was if it was everybody's watching her and then they bowed out. Like they clearly watched right. and wanted to see what yeah. happened the rest of the way. Yeah. So yeah, I think interesting. And I think it might be one of those things where you start watching because of Caitlin Clark, and then you're like, "Oh wow, well this is interesting." I'm in, yeah. Like I, I do that. We with do the, like drafts. Well, I do that with drafts the NFL, are great. I do that with the NFL draft. I don't, yeah. I don't have a favorite team, and I don't follow it. Like mm-hmm. you know, like I know, I know, like oh yeah, here's the best quarterback prospect, and here's Caleb Williams. And, yeah. You know, I know, but then we get to a point like, and with the eighth pick. The Seahawks select a defensive tackle from Michigan State. And I'm like, I don't know who that yep, is. Yeah. But I find it still to be an enjoyable telecast because something draws me to it. Like, who's going to be the first player picked? Who's going to be the first quarterback off the board? You know, is Johnny Manziel going to get selected? Something brings me to it. Mm-hmm. And then as I'm watching it, I go, well, this is kind of interesting. Is that your favorite draft? No, the NBA draft. It's mine too. Even though I, I it's because I know all the players. Even though I recognize the NFL, if I'm ranking drafts, even though I know NFL, the NFL draft is is bigger and 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 more prestigious, and that's what everybody's. It's going to get the biggest number by it far. It matters more with us with the Grizzlies here, everything like that. The NBA draft is just. I mean, I'm locked in every year, no matter what, because I want to see what my team's doing. And, and and again, I'm in with the NFL with the Titans, but. I don't know. I'm I'm with you. I like and it's and it's like NBA. It's and I know they're breaking it apart this year to two nights, which is a mistake. But yes, I agree. It's a horrible mistake. But it's short and sweet. Like here, one night, let's go. We're done. Let's talk about it. I like that. I like that. Except that's not the NFL draft. The NFL draft's multi nights. Right. That's why I like the NBA though. Like it's like give it to me now. Let's break yeah, it all now down. We're, yeah, but like you said, now we're getting away from that. I, the NBA draft is interesting because. It, it's more interesting to me than the NFL draft. But, like, if you're picked seventh in the NFL draft, you're going to start for your team next year. Yes, that's true. If you're picked, like, whoever the Grizzlies take seventh, if the Grizzlies pick seventh, they might come off the bench, right? They might not even play on opening night. That's a good point. You know? Yep. So I, they, go, I go NBA, NFL, WWE. I can't wait for the WWE draft. I can't wait for the WWE. I'm way more interested in that than NBA, I am. NFL, WWE. 
I might throw WNBA in the top five. Well, because at least WNBA, like, you know, these people are going to matter. Like, in Major League Baseball draft, it's like, um, I'm good. You select somebody, Pass. and it's like, I'll see you in three years. Yeah. Although, like, um, Jack Leiter, I saw this. Yeah. He was top five pick two Jackson, years ago. Jackson with the Orioles, yeah. Well, he's about to, yeah. Jackson Holiday just yeah, came up. Yeah. Um, Jack Leiter's about, I think he's going to make his big league debut tomorrow, maybe. So maybe getting a little quicker with it. Yeah. A little quicker with it. But th that's the problem with the Major League Baseball draft. It's like, oh, and the Pirates select Paul Skeens at LSU. And it's like, okay, well, when's he going to pitch in the big leagues? 2026, you know? Yeah. A little bit of a. Yeah, WNBA is in my top five drafts. Okay. It's in my top five drafts. Well, they had a big night the other night. Yeah, 2. they did. 2.45 million. Congrats to them. Number three. We got a new Dear Jane. Okay. And it's not as uh, scandalous as as, mm. the, as my, most, my, my, my most favorite. I liked that one. The one at the dinner party? The dinner party. I, I like the I, – I wish I could remember what the one before the dinner party was. I feel like that was my favorite one. We've had some wild ones. Remember the fella that had all his – boss's daughter's pictures on his that's phone? the one Woo! that's the one Woo! that one was insane what you doing buddy that one was insane you're a little dude. wild you're a wild fella because i just don't know how you solve that case uh -uh. that one was we were we were we were running in circles with that one no I just around that. you can't get around that one yeah that one was insane that was insane this is less insane but still an issue this could come up in your own life yeah and that's what i like to use these for these dear james they could come up in any of our lives and none of us are none of us are immune from being the subject of a deer, Jane, you know? Yeah. Any This could happen to any of us. That's true. All right. What's up, Jane? A woman wrote Jane this time. Okay. She's got a boyfriend. All right? They always do. Well, not always. Sometimes women have girlfriends. That's, that's true. Yes, you know? Yes. Sometimes women have girlfriends. Yeah. You're I'm, okay with that, aren't you? Of course I am. Of course yes. I am, too. Yes. Okay. Just making sure. Mm -hmm. Just making sure. Sometimes the beard makes it a little confusing. Proceed. <laughs> Sometimes they have girlfriends. Mm-hmm. This one happens to have a boyfriend, though. Doesn't matter to me either way. I, it doesn't matter to me. Right. If this were about her girlfriend, it wouldn't matter to me. Same. But it happens to be about her boyfriend. Okay. Okay. Here's the way she starts it. She says, Dear Jane. Because how else would you? First, let me just say I love my boyfriend. I really do. Oh, I know where this oh, is going. We're oh, we're in trouble already. That's where we're starting. Yep, yeah, we're in trouble that's already. That's where we're starting. Yep. Oh, if I've seen one Dear Jane let her start like that, I've seen a million. First, let me just say I love my boyfriend. I really do. He's so wonderful to me in every way possible, which makes me feel so horrible for even bringing this up, but I really need some advice. Oh, you've come to the right place. When my boyfriend and I started dating about six years ago, we used to joke, hey, let's get on with it. What do you mean started dating six years ago? Are there still boyfriend and girlfriend? Yeah, let's either get on with it. Yeah, what How do you feel about doing? that, by the way? How you feel about being with somebody? Put a ring on it. Put a ring on it. Yeah. How you feel about being with somebody? I for don't six know. Years? Things are different now. Things are different now. But like, I can understand like if you've been with somebody from the age of fifteen to twenty-one, mm -hmm. that's fine with me. Yeah. But if you've been with somebody from like thirty to thirty-six, what are we doing? Right. It's time. Right. To, it's time to do something, don't you think? I think so. Okay. When my boyfriend and I started dating about six years ago, we used to. Otherwise, you're just wasting each other's time. Mm -hmm. We used to jokingly call each other by all kinds of stupid pet names. Let's stop here. Do you have pet names for your wife? What do you call your wife? Kara. I call my wife Kelly. Yeah. What is your wife? If your wife were to call you right now, what pops up in the name? Kara. Mine says Kelly. Yeah. And yet I posted something one time on the internet somewhere about like missed calls or something or mm -hmm. a text message exchange. It was something funny mm -hmm. about my family, or at least I thought it was. Mm -hmm. And um, a slew of replies were like, your wife is in your phone under Kelly? And I'm like, well, that's her name. What else would I use? I'm in my wife's phone as Bennett. Right. So what I, and, and then I see other, and like other people's phones. So I was like, well, what are you supposed to put in there? Yeah. And it was like wifey or um, sweetheart or, uh, you know, honey pie. Maybe you call your wife Honey pie. Do you call your wife anything? Not really. I don't call my wife nothing other than Kelly. No. Throw a babe in there. Maybe a babe. What's up, babe? What's up, babe? Hey, babe. But even that makes me feel a little. Yeah, I've never been a big pet name kind of guy. I'm not a pet name guy. No. You know? Uh-uh. Oh, it's not really my thing. So anyway, but they, they are. They've been together for six years, and they used to call each other all sorts of silly pet names. 
Like she gives examples. You ready for this? Yes. Donut. Hey, donut. Hey, you get to call your significant other donut. Like how you do it with somebody and be like, all right, what we got planned for the rest of the day, donut? That's weird. Isn't it? I don't like donut. Yeah. Imagine you're just laying there cuddling and somebody's like, you want to get some brunch donut? I'd be like, what the fuck? Yeah, that's weird. What'd you call me donut for? Is that a fat it, joke? I know. That's what I. That's how I would take it. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, yeah, I like donuts. Okay, uh, oh, cool. oh, yeah, I like donuts. Thanks. I like donuts. I, did I tell you about the I tell you about the girl, little girl at the at, in Phoenix walked past me. I was struggling on a, I don't know, let's call it a fr- last two Fridays ago. Mm-hmm. You know, got like not got to be in the lobby at eight a.m. type of thing. Mm-hmm. Rough night, and. uh I'm walking out toward a, walking out toward a, you know, the car, the car, Mm-mm. you know, the whole deal. A little girl, must have been like, you know, six or seven, you know, in that age. Mm-hmm. And I'm walking this way. You know, we're passing, like two ships passing in the night. Mm-hmm. Little girl and her mom, presumably. And I'm walking this way. And as I'm walking this way, I drop something. Yep. So I had to stop. And I stopped at the exact, you know, but the, this little girl, she thinks we're walking, so we walk past each other. Yeah. In other words, I stopped. She thought I kept walking. She thought I was gone. And you know what I heard her say? What? She said, that guy looks like Mr. Clean. That's not nice. I didn't think so. How does she even know who Mr. Clean is, though? Oh, she probably sees it on her parents' cleaning supplies. Probably. Yeah. With kids, you got those magic erasers laying everywhere. Don't tell me. Yeah. All right. So she was, this, this little girl name called me. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, that was... I mean, I do kind of look like Mr. Clean. I get it. Uh-huh. All right, but I was—I don't think you look like Mr. Clean. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. But I don't really use nick. I mean, I do use nicknames for some people. Mm-hmm. Like I called Strong Jaw, Strong Jaw, mm-hmm. and Dead Leg, Dead Leg. That's what the Island College Basketball Podcast. Yep. But my wife is just Kelly. And your wife is just Kara. That's right. All right. Well, these folks here—they call each other all sorts of names, like Donut, mm-hmm. Babes. Hey, Babes. That's fine. Cringe. I don't like it either. Absolute cringe. Hey, Babes. Adding an S on anything like that is so So, hey, cringe. babe, you're okay with. Hey, yeah. babes, eh. Cringe. I got you. Honey pot. Ridiculous. Hey there, honey pot. That is so dumb. What yeah. else? Yeah. Um, just anything and everything yeah, we yeah. can think of that would make the other person laugh. Here's the thing. Does that really make somebody else laugh? If, no, if, I'm if, not even smiling. If I were walking through the kitchen tonight and my wife said, hey, honey pot, I'd be like, what the fuck? Huh, what? Yeah. I think she's making some sort of joke. I wouldn't think she'd be an affectionate. Right. I think she's calling me a, a, a fat, bald bee yep. or something. You mm-hmm. know? I'd be like, you think I'm a fat, bald bee? All right. If either of us were having a bad day, here's how the letter continues. That's the joke we would turn to. So like, oh, are you having a bad day? I really am. Oh, well, cheer up, honey pot, donut. Okay. I don't get it. But this was their life. This is their relationship. I don't have to understand everybody's relationship. The letter continues. Which is why I somehow missed when my boyfriend introduced an actual nickname that he's been using every day since the earliest months of our relationship. And I despise it. For whatever reason, it makes my skin crawl anytime he says it. I find myself having to swallow back my cringe before I can even turn to face him whenever he calls. What do you think it is? Is it a, is it, is it a, it's something you've heard probably it's something before. you've heard before. Um, I bet it's, he says, Hey, Oh, look at you. You look great. I, Oh, woo, look at you in this dress. You look great. And then he says the nickname. What is it? Sweetums. You look great. Pookie pie. I was close. I, know, I thought you I was were gonna, close. I, know, I was getting, you yeah, the I was going to say sweetie pie. Pookie, pookie pie. What does that even mean, Pookie Pie? Pookie Pie is really bad. So he's always like, I love you, Pookie Pie. Uh-huh. Ah, uh, ugh. Hey, baby. Sick. Hey, babes. Hey, babes. Hey, donut. What are you thinking of? Are you gonna, have you already had dinner? No, I haven't had dinner tonight. Oh, that's great, honey pie. Why don't you go pick up some Chinese, Pookie Pie? What? I hate that. I hate it. I hate that. All right. Well, here's what the, here's, okay. So here's what the lady wants to know. This is the guy saying it to the girl. Guy says it to the girl. Man, that dude sucks. Oh, yeah. That guy sucks. I mean, the obvious. I don't even have to know him. That guy sucks. The obvious explanation, the obvious answer to this is like, get out of this relationship. Yes. You're in a terrible relationship. Yeah. He might be a serial killer. Pookie pie. Yeah. Hey there, Pookie pie. Yeah. Yeah. 
Would you like to share a bowl of cereal, Pookie Pie? No. Are you no. about to murder me? Are you about to murder? What are you doing? Call me Pookie Pie. My name's Kim. Uh huh. Why do you call me Pookie Pie? I think you just, it's pretty easy. Get out of the relationship. Yeah. You, you got to end this. Break it off. Break it off. Deal breaker. It's a deal breaker. Like this guy been calling you Pookie Pie for six years, didn't realize it's ridiculous yet. Deal breaker. End it. I mean, I would, I think first purposefully hurt his feelings and see what happens. Like, dude, you're a grown ass man. Yeah. Like, first off, first off, you're like, like, I know we're joking around here with like the nicknames and stuff sometimes, but like you're a grown ass man and you're calling me Pookie Pie all the yeah. time. Like, listen, the I love, I, I love you. Yeah. I love you. And I, and I, I, and I plan to have sex with you again sometime. But every time you call me Pookie Pie, it makes me not want to. Yeah. Like, I don't like you anymore. You're making me. Yeah. Ugh. I told Jane I have to swallow back my cringe mm -hmm. because you won't stop calling me Pookie Pie. Yeah. So first, hurt his feelings bad, right? And then figure, and then see where it goes from there. Do you find that's helpful? If there is something your partner does that drives you crazy, addressing it with them. Uh, you know, as you what you'll learn is as, as you as you go and you know this um, as you get further along in your relationship, you get a little more comfortable. Um, pointing things out mm -hmm. and sometimes it goes really wrong but sometimes does it ever fix it does it i don't think i don't think i've ever fixed anything i do think i don't think i've ever fixed anything in the moment i have told everybody i live with all of the things that drive me crazy they all know yes. every single one of them does Same. something different that drives me crazy they all know i've told them uh -huh. i will i'll make a list if you need me to yeah nothing changes yeah nothing changes yeah but i told my little guy a month ago, because he will not stop bringing food upstairs. Mm -hmm. And he ain't the type who brings food upstairs and eats it and then throws away whatever doesn't need to be there no, it anymore. it stays there. He just, there's just food upstairs yep. all the time now. So I said, you can't bring food upstairs anymore. It's making a mess. It's nasty. You don't clean up after you sell. And I walked upstairs yesterday, and there's just a crackers just laying in the floor upstairs. He, he cares so little about what drives me crazy yeah. that he didn't even try to hide it. I even told him this. I said, you know, this is wild to me. Because like, I understand if you hear your father say, no more food upstairs, you might be like, I still want food upstairs. Mm -hmm. and he's not home anyway. But like, wouldn't you try to pick up after yourself? Like you just left crackers. It's like you're a yeah. murderer and you just left the gun laying by the body with your fingerprints all over it. Like, why do you respect me so little? So mine that you wouldn't even try to like. No, that's crazy. Make me but that, not walk a into kid. crackers. That's a kid. But here's my point. I've made it clear to him. This drives me crazy. You're doing it. Yeah. But I want to be clear. My I, same thing with my wife. There are things she does that drives me insane. What? Like what? She stacks things. Oh, uh, we've talked about this before. I put things up. She stacks things. Now she will say, "You hardly ever put anything up because mm -hmm. all you have to do is worry about yourself." That's a direct quote. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. But like. She will buy, she'll go to Target and then grab Target bags yep. and then set them on the dining room table. And uh -huh. that's just where they'll be. Yep. See, and that drives me crazy. No, I no, go to no. Target and I buy stuff and then I put it where it needs to go. And the dining room table remains unbothered. But these, uh, they'll just be uh -uh. Target bags sitting on the dining room See, table. See, my relationship is literally the exact opposite You're of your her relationship. And I'm, yes. Right. Like, I get Kelly. I get it. Because in mine, and we, uh, this is one of our biggest fights is I'll put something. This is every fight. I'll put ours. something right where I want it, right where I know where it is. And then I can't find it. And I'm like, why did you put that where I can't find it? And it, uh, it happens every day. It happens literally every day. And listen, I will say like, I'm kind of a messy person. And so like, thank God for my wife who keeps a clean home because it'd be disastrous without her. But all of our fights are I just I put that shit where I want it. And I just want it sitting there, and I don't care what it looks like. And all and all no our, companies coming over. And all of our Bay Pookie and all, Pie. And all of our <laughs> fights are. Does this go on? Is this really go on the dining room table? Well, no. Then why is it on the dining room table? Well, I've been busy. There's no way you've been busy for two straight weeks. It's been on this table for two straight weeks. It drives me crazy. Here's my point. Mm. You don't think we've had this conversation? 50,000 times, yeah. it doesn't change anything. Mm -hmm. It doesn't change anything. And, and I want to be fair. 
there are things I do that drive her crazy. Yeah. And she says these things drive. Oh, same. You know, you know what drives her crazy? Mm -hmm. I get the kids up for school, and then I'm like, all right, hey guys, hey boys, get in the shower. Yeah. And then you know what I do? I sneak up off stairs, upstairs. Mm -hmm. I start working. Mm -hmm. You know what she would say? Why is it my responsibility to get them out of the shower, get them off to school while you're That's upstairs working? That's a big one. Right? Yeah. Right? Now she's one. told me that 50 times. You know what I did this morning, though? Mm -hmm. Same thing. Same yeah. thing. I needed to go see if somebody got in a transfer portal. Uh huh. You know? So I, I'm not pointing fingers mm -hmm. as, as much as I'm just saying this is the reality of relationships. It doesn't ever really change anything. Yeah, but this is a specific word that's like, I think you can change you it. You think you can change this? Yeah, I think you can Never change Never call this. me Pookie Pie again and we'll be okay. Yeah, or we're done. Or we're done. Yep. What if it hurts? What if he's like, God, I just thought I was being sweet. No, he deserves to be to have his feelings. You hurt should for get that. to a place in a yeah. relationship where you can tell somebody, "Hey, like I know, I know you? you think I like that, yeah, but I don't. Mm -hmm. So please don't ever do that again." Yeah, you got to be comfortable enough to say that. You do, and I agree with you. Perhaps this is one where you can actually fix the problem. I don't know though. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but like, I don't know. My instincts are don't be using little goofy ass nicknames on your partner like that because I wouldn't. But, I, but I, I have friends who do. Sometimes I'll be with my friends and I'll hear them take the phone call, mm -hmm. you know, from their partner. Yeah. And it's like, oh, hey, honey pie. Oh, hey, sweet pea. Oh, hey there, pumpkin pants. You know, they say stuff like that. So maybe we're the idiots. Maybe. I don't think we are. I don't, I don't think, think we, we are. are either. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know anything. Anymore. I'm going to let them figure this out. Yeah. But I do think this is a pretty easy fix. Just don't call me pumpkin pie anymore or pookie, pookie pie. pie. Yeah. In fact, call me pumpkin pie. That's better. Or probably better. Would you rather be called pumpkin pie than pookie pie? Easily pumpkin. Easily. Yeah. Yeah. Easily. Number four. Wild transfer portal situation last night. What's up? And this is just uh, an indication of where we are with the transfer portal. Used to, players would only transfer if they, uh, you know, were unhappy. Mm -hmm. If they weren't getting the playing time they wanted. They weren't getting the shots they wanted. And now we got a situation last night. This is a good one. Jeremy Roach, what do you think a player wants? What do you think a basketball player wants? If I said, hey, you're going to be a college basketball player, what do you want out of the experience? What do you think you'd want? Uh, playing time. Okay. Um, playing time uh, to be a good college basketball player. Okay. Uh, yeah. So playing time, sure. production. Yeah. I think now money. Sure. And... Yeah, to be the big man on campus. Okay, so yeah. Jeremy Roach played at Duke. Yep. He started there for four years. He gets a fifth year because of the COVID year. Mm -hmm. He's been starting for four years. Two years for Mike Krzyzewski, two years for John Shire. He was projected to be the starting point guard next season for a team that is currently listed as the favorite to win the national championship at FanDuel. Okay. Not who I have, number one, but FanDuel has Duke okay. as the favorite. So you're going to, hey, you want to be the starting point guard for the team that's picked to win the national championship mm -hmm. and is arguably the biggest brand in the sport, the Duke Blue Devils. Let's go. Who would give that up? Nobody. He is. Why is he giving him it up? Probably money. Yeah. Probably some, but like the that means. Duke's got to have some. That's right. NIL. No, I mean, but what are here's we talking the, here's about? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Because we'll see where this goes. Yeah. Transfer portal closes at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. So up until then, you know, pe people can still enter the transfer portal today. Right. And next week. So if you're Duke, I'm not even going to say why wouldn't you do this because I think they probably already have. Mm -hmm. If you're Duke, you're like, okay, we're bringing back Tyrese Proctor. We're bringing back Caleb Foster. we got the number one recruiting class in the country. Cooper Flagg, probable number one pick, 2025 mm -hmm. NBA draft. He's on the wing, this and that. All, we're, missing one, we're missing a point guard. Who wants to come play point guard at Duke next year for a million dollars with Cooper Flagg? Can't you – even if there's somebody else out there who's not even interested in transferring, wouldn't you suddenly be like, maybe I'm interested in that? Yeah. Like, let's say if you're Mark Sears at Alabama and somebody said, hey, you could enter the draft, but you're not going to get picked where you want to get picked. And you can stay at Alabama, and that's fine too. But Duke will take you. Mm -hmm. $1.4 million. You can go be the starting point guard for the preseason number one team, play at Duke. Wouldn't you have, even if you weren't interested in transferring, don't you at least have to listen to that? Mm -hmm. Of course you do. Mm -hmm. So my terrible development on a surface level for Duke to lose uh, Jeremy Roach, but I won't be surprised if they end up with a better point guard. 
Yeah, okay. Just out of the transfer portal, perhaps one that's not even in the transfer portal yet. For what it's worth, I did drop Duke from number three down to number seven in the top 25 and one. Your Houston Cougars remain, remain number one. Number five. A woman who accused former Major League pitcher Trevor Bauer of sexual assault has been indicted by a grand jury in Arizona on felony charges of fraudulent schemes and theft by extortion. You following the story? Yeah. Okay. So, Trevor Bauer, um, you know, all-star, ace, big contract, pitch with the Dodgers, gets accused of sexual assault by one woman and subsequently – is accused of sexual assault by multiple women. The Dodgers cut ties. MLB mm-hmm. suspends him. And all these cases have been sort of playing out, you know, in the shadows of, of the larger story. But he has been out of Major League Baseball for years now. He has always maintained his innocence. And to this day, he has never been charged with a crime. But his career is maybe over. Because nobody will hire him. He's pitching in the Mexican League right now Mm -hmm. after pitching in Japan previously. But the news comes yesterday. One of the women who accused him of sexual assault, one of the women who played a role in his career being derailed, has been charged with a crime because she was trying to extort him. Mm. And and get money from him under false pretenses and with um, with express threats. In other words, what both of these people agree on is that they had one experience together. One. It was one night. Obviously, she says it wasn't consensual. He says that it was. But what the investigation showed is that before she ever accused him of sexual assault, she told him that she was pregnant and that she needed in excess of a million dollars to terminate the pregnancy. He said, I'm not giving you that kind of money to terminate a pregnancy, but I will support your decision. I want to be clear. This is what the text messages and evidence shows. He says, but I will support your decision to terminate the pregnancy if that's what you want. And he ends up sending her around $9,000 to cover what she says is the cost of the Abortion. Well, it turns out she never had an abortion. And there's no evidence that she was ever pregnant. And so that's how you get the yeah. um, fraudulent schemes and theft by extortion. At first, she says, I need in excess of a million dollars or else I'm going to have this baby. He says, I'm not doing that. Then she says, well, then I need you to at least cover the abortion. He said, I'll do that. Sends her that money. But there's no evidence she ever had an abortion. And then when she didn't get more money from him, that's when she accused him of sexual assault. Mm -hmm. Now, she's been the one charged with a crime. So there are multiple women. Is this the same woman? Different woman. This is a different woman than the one that blew it all up with the text messages and stuff. But even her story has started to fall apart. That's right. So I'm not here to tell you, and I want to be clear about this, that Trevor Bauer's a good guy, that Trevor Bauer's innocent, I'm not even here to tell you I know Trevor Bauer isn't someone who has committed sexual assault. I don't know this guy. What I am here to tell you is that as all of these stories have played out and professional investigators have looked into this stuff, to this moment, there is no evidence, not enough evidence to bring about charges that he's ever done what he's accused of doing. And there is quite literally evidence that at least one of the women was lying because she's the one who's been charged with a crime. In right. other words, women, multiple women bring allegations against Trevor Bauer. People look into it and they say, we're not charging him, but we do need to charge this woman because she's lying. Mm-hmm. What do you make of that? Man, I, it's... Because here's Trevor I, Bauer. He jumps I, on social media last yeah, night and he says, when do I get to work again? All right? Here's what Trevor Bauer says. In last night's social media post and in other interviews in recent months. You know what Trevor Bauer says? Mm. I'm single. I like rough sex. All right. I have had consensual rough sex with various women. And I realize it has come back to bite me. Um, And now I'm in this situation, but it has always been consensual. I have never done anything that wasn't consented to. 
And in reality, I'm the victim here. I'm the victim. I lost my career. I've lost hundreds of millions of dollars. I lost my reputation. And law enforcement officials have looked into this. And you know who they think deserves to be charged with a crime? Not me. The woman who said I did things I never did. I've told you the whole time I didn't do this. Now professionals have looked into it and they charged her with a crime, not me. When do I get to pitch again? When do I get my career back? That resonates with me. I think so too. And I'm not even here to vouch for him. I am not. I know, but I don't I know it. who this guy is. I'm just saying it should be scary. Yeah, he may be a horrible person. We acknowledge that. But can we not also acknowledge, because I know everybody wants you to pick a side. I don't know why you can't be nuanced. I don't know why you can't say Trevor Bauer might be an awful guy. and might actually be what people say he is. Mm -hmm. But there is no evidence to support that at this point. And there's not, and there's not real evidence that he's broken any laws. He's never been charged with a crime. Yeah. There's no evidence to support the claims, or at least not credible evidence that law enforcement officials feel like is enough to bring charges. Mm -hmm. And he's lost his entire career based off the word of other people, yeah. some of whom have clearly lied because they're charged with a crime. Is that not terrifying? That 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 with somebody's mouth they can end your career. Yes. That should be that should scare the shit out of every anybody. All right. And it doesn't mean Trevor Bauer isn't as he's described by some people. I don't know this guy. I'm just saying this is true. He's never been charged with a crime. The people who have accused him of things have been found to lie about certain things, and he still lost his entire career. Mm -hmm. That's terrifying. I think so too. I, and I don't. I don't know. Like this. I is, don't know. I don't think this is the part like where you're supposed back to say, from it. Yeah. This, this is the part where you're supposed to say. So here's what we should do. I don't know what we should do. I don't know what the right answer is here. Yeah. I just know that that is terrifying. I don't know because there's 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 somebody who would argue, well, well, you know, you have to believe the woman always. Mm -hmm. Well, what that implies is that the woman never lies. Well, we've got evidence right here that, that the woman lied, did lie. Yes. Right? So that whole gotta believe the woman always stuff kind of goes out the window when I'm showing you a woman who lied. She's charged with a crime right now, a felony. There's a woman who's facing a felony charge right now because she lied. So I don't know what the right thing is. I really don't either. That's a, it's a really interesting story for sure. I don't know what the right thing is. I don't know how I would handle this. I just know that I find it terrifying that you could be into whatever he was into. It theoretically be consented to. Women still accuse you of sexual assault People look into it. You're never charged with a crime. But what they do find while they're looking into it is that this woman was lying the mm -hmm. entire time. Mm -hmm. And you still lose your whole career. Yep. Tough situation. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah, I don't know where it goes from here. I don't know what the right thing is. I just, I feel like it's very important to, because without me bringing this up today, you might not have known about it. Right. But boy, we talked about it when the woman had the busted up eyes and the pictures went public. Right. And, and the text messages came out. We were like, oh, man, Trevor Bauer. If you're going to talk about it then, I think you have to talk about it now and update the story. None of the update proves beyond anything that Trevor Bauer isn't everything somebody has said. But there's no proof that he is either. And yet his career has been blown up because of it. That's a, that's a wild situation. So we'll see where it goes from here. Maybe he will pitch in the major leagues again someday. But for now... He's reduced to pitching in Mexico because uh, he's been accused of some awful stuff, undeniably. But again, to this point, there's not really any evidence that uh, – certainly no evidence has been presented that has led to investigators actually charging him with a crime. We can speak about it in that way because that part is – that part's true. Be back with GP's carryout. Let's face it. There's a lot of trash talk in basketball, but the great teams let their performance do the talking. Like Ford F-150 with Pro Power on board, a class-exclusive industry-first feature that turns your truck into a mobile generator and leaves the competition speechless. Ford F-150, official truck of the Grizzlies. Greatness starts here at your Mid-South Ford dealer. Classes full-size pickups under 8,500 pounds, GBWR. 
It's more fun to be there live to see the Memphis Grizzlies hit the court all season long. From the electricity and FedEx Forum to the highlight reel plays, there's nothing quite like Grizzlies basketball. As the official marketplace of the Memphis Grizzlies, Ticketmaster gets you in with a huge selection of seats. So get off the couch and into the stands while you still can. Score tickets today at Ticketmaster.com. That's Ticketmaster.com. LifeCare Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At LifeCare, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at LifeCareAMB.com. We know there's only one team you want to watch, and Valley Sports is the place to get your Grizzlies. Experience the comebacks, the buzzer beaters, the can't-miss Memphis-made moments live. Valley Sports keeps the grind going before and after the game, too, with Pete, Brevin, Fish, and Chris on Grizzlies Live. Watch Grizzlies basketball all season long with Valley Sports and streaming on the Valley Sports app. Valley Sports, home of the only team you want to watch. Let's face it, there's a lot of trash talk in basketball, but the great teams let their performance do the talking. Like Ford F-150 with Pro Power on board, a class-exclusive industry-first feature that turns your truck into a mobile generator and leaves the competition speechless. Ford F-150, official truck of the Grizzlies. Greatness starts here at your Mid-South Ford dealer. Classes full-size pickups under 8,500 pounds, GBWR. Presented by Ortho South. We're in the Bill Ford Tough Studio. Let's wrap it up with GP's Carryout. It's time for GP's Carryout. One final segment filled with stuff to take with you. It's not everything you need to know, but it's most of it. What did we learn today? A whole bunch of stuff, but we mostly in the first hour focused on the NBA play-in because last night the Golden State Warriors season was ended. They lost by a bunch in Sacramento. So the Kings advance, play the Pelicans on Friday night in New Orleans, and the Warriors are done. Steph Curry, Draymond Green, Klay Thompson. It's possible never play another game together. Klay Thompson entering unrestricted free agency. It's 0 with 10 from the field last night, 0 with 6 from 3, 0 points. If that's the way it ends, that's not ideal. Like we talked about earlier in the show, the best thing for both sides is just, I know Klay probably thinks he deserves a Draymond contract. Perhaps even more. But if they give him that, that would be a mistake. And the smartest thing both sides could do is sit down and just say, hey, listen, you don't want to leave. And we don't want you to leave. And you don't want to lose. And we don't want to lose. And the only way we can accomplish both of those things, which is, you know, it means you stay and we don't lose, is you've got to come back on a team-friendly contract. Mm -hmm. If if you just can't, then like, hey, we want you back. We cannot give you all this money because we will, we you'll make a lot of money, but we'll lose. You won't be happy. That's not what you want. So let's just get this thing done at a reasonable contract for somebody. No legacy contracts. No, we're going to give you all this money because of what you did for us. We're going to give you what we think you're worth over the next year or two or three. And if you're not happy with that, then... Just understand, you're making this decision to leave, not us. We are offering you a contract. If you don't want it, then you'll... But if you leave, you'll regret it. If you leave, you'll regret it. I think that's true. Yeah, I do too. I think if he leaves, even for more money, he'll look back and wish that he wouldn't have. So just take less money, stay where you're at, let him work around the fringes, and maybe you can build something into, you know, looks like a something better than a play-in team next season. I don't know. We'll see. But... Uh, they got some hard decisions coming up out in San Francisco. What's today's biggest game? Playing Eastern Conference tonight. Doesn't seem as good, does it? No. 
Last night seemed fun. Not even close. This seems uh, like the I, first game I'm good with. The first game's kind of fun. It's Jimmy Butler and it's Joel Embiid and you know. But Hawks Bulls, I don't care nothing about. Yikes! Like man, I don't want either of those teams advancing. That that, that arena could blow up. It wouldn't matter to me. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Six o'clock then. ESPN Heat Sixers. Philadelphia five and a half point favorite. Totals 208.5. The winner will be the number seven seed in the Eastern Conference playoffs. Have a seven-game series against the Knicks. The loser will play the winner of the Hawks-Bulls game. And the winner of that game would be the eighth-place team in the Western Eastern mm-hmm. Conference playoffs. Sixers minus five and a half. Your record now 102, 113, and four. You're down 23.3 units. Lost last night. Yeah. Another reason to hate the Warriors. Yeah. I mean, are you serious? Are you serious? That's how you want to end your season? Hmm. Freaking joke. Joke. Um, give me the Heat. Heat? Plus five and a half. I think this is going to be a competitive game. It's the Heat in the playoffs. It's Eric Spolster in the yeah, playoffs. Yeah, man. They always turn it up in the playoffs. Well, we'll see. Okay. Yeah, give me the Heat. Then it's a take the Heat plus the five and a half. Tonight's six o'clock tip. It's on ESPN. What are we watching on TV? Have you heard of this show, The Sympathizer? No. So I saw it last night. They were um, promoing it during something. I think I was watching something last night, and they were promoing it. Maybe the basketball game. And it was like at the bottom, like, watch The Sympathizer. I said, what is The Sympathizer? It's a new miniseries. It's on HBO. It's like replaced Curb. Like, Curb comes on. Now, Curb's done. Yep. So now we have a new thing that has to come on. Okay. It's called The Sympathizer. All right. It's uh, 9 o'clock Eastern, Sunday nights on HBO. Oh, this Robert Downey Jr. is in this. Yes. Yes. He it, looks weird. In, 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 in just generally? No, in the show, like in, he looks weird. Oh, okay. You've seen the pictures of him in the show, I have you? Seen, I don't know nothing. Yeah, he looks weird. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It, it's a historical, it's a historical black comedy drama. Oh, that's so he's playing somebody then. Oh, yeah. That's, that's why. Yeah. He's playing a real person. I don't know. Because otherwise, I don't know why you want to look like that for this show. Well, now His I gotta eyes see are him. looking weird. Okay, well, now I got to see. Look him. at him and tell me you don't look weird. Robert Downey. A little scary. Jr., the sympathizer. Let's see what he looks like. Oh, he does look like a Isn't little. Isn't that scary? Yeah, he looks like something. Yeah, those eyes are scary looking. And that hair. Yeah. Something going on there. Yeah. I don't know what's happening. So it's, uh, it's based off of a Pulitzer Prize winning novel. Okay. Vietnamese origin. I've always wanted to go to Vietnam. It sounds, of course you have. Yeah. Of course you have. So it, the reviews are great. Okay. Episode one. HBO it, does it again. HBO does it again. Yeah. Episode one is on HBO on Sunday night, but you can stream it right now on your Max app. Okay. And be all caught up by the time we get to episode two on Sunday night. I'm going to do it. I'm in. I'm in. We're in. The Sympathizer HBO Max. What's the best thing we've read? Top 25 and 1 is updated over at CBSSports.com. I wrote about the Jeremy Roach situation at Duke. If you haven't seen it yet, check it out, CBSSports.com. What's on tap for tomorrow? Oh, tomorrow's Thursday. Isn't it? It is Thursday. You know how much I like Thursday. I like Thursdays, too. We um, Underrated day. Do people even know? Have we even said this yet? Do people even know? We're having a short week this week. I don't think it's been said oh, out loud. I, oh, should I not say nothing? I don't know. I don't know. I, you say whatever you want. I'm going to say whatever I want then. We're having a short week this week. So typically, Jessica Benson would join me on Fridays. But she's going to do that on Thursdays now. And you ready for this? Typically, I join Chris Vernon on Fridays. But I'm going to do that in like eight minutes. Oh, nice. I'll be watching. Oh, I'll be watching too. Yep. It's going to be fun. Vernon's had a wee. That's a, that's a tough spot for you. Why? Well... Jaron Jackson Jr., oh, yeah. Tony Allen, yeah. Gary Parrish. What do you mean? That's just a tough week. What do you mean? I mean, you're just following greatness. I am greatness. You, you have an obligation to be great well, today on this. that show. Well, then watch this. I'm going to be great. You think I yeah. can't tell? I need the best Gary Parrish segment on the Chris Vernon show that I've ever seen. Coming up. Okay, good. Right, coming up. I'm going to make up some stuff. I'm going to make up stories then. Let's go. All right, let's go. I can't wait. What do you mean? I'm up against greatness. Dude, this is legends. I'm a legend. Legendary Grizz. I thought I was legendary. I think Jaren's a Grizz legend at this point. Like, those are Grizz legends. Am I not a follow- legend, too? But you're not a Grizz legend yet. I thought I was a legend. Yeah, you haven't been here long enough. You're not a Grizz legend yet. I thought I was a legend. 
starts today. Okay, it starts, starts today. today. Okay, Tony Allen. All right, Tony Allen. Tuesdays with Tony. We'll uh-huh. see. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, Tuesdays with Tony. Try Thursdays with GP. Wednesdays right, with GP. Wednesdays with GP. Oh, yeah. Got it. <laughs> Bennett, I was looking for the Thursday. Oh, yeah. Mondays with Jaron. Tuesdays with Tony. Wednesdays with GP. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Let's go. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm going to enjoy mine. We'll meet back here tomorrow at 10. Till then, be careful, be kind, be good, rep your hood.